Hello, welcome to a brand new medical surgical lesson. My name is Jessie Wheatley and I'll be facilitating this lesson. Please make sure you have your notes, your notebook ready, and your textbook so you can follow along with this lesson. Thank you for listening to this lesson. This lesson covers a quick review of the anatomy and physiology of the musculoskeletal system. We will focus on assessment methods age-related changes, key assessment methods, and RN diagnostic test assessment for this system. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to review the musculoskeletal system with emphasis on nursing roles associated with assessment and patient education. You should discuss changes in the musculoskeletal system for older adults and common diagnostic tests for this system. You should understand that movement and mobility is a basic human need that is essential for performing activities of daily living. Understand that when a patient is not able to perform ADLs or other routine daily activities, self-esteem and self-worth can be diminished. Discuss diagnostic testing and patient education for each of the diseases that will be covered later for this system. The musculoskeletal system is the second largest body system and includes the bones, the joints, and the skeletal muscles, as well as the supporting structures. Mobility is a basic human need that is essential for performing activities of daily living. Please remember that disease, surgery, and trauma can affect one or more parts of the musculoskeletal system. Often it leads to decreased mobility. When we talk about the skeletal system, we're talking about 206 bones and multiple joints uh, in the human body. Bones can be classified in two ways. We can classify them by shape and we can also classify them by structure. So when we talk about lung bones, an example of a lung bone is one like this, the, or a femur, are cylindrical with rounded ends and often they bear weight. These are your weight bearing joints. When we talk about short bones, we're talking about uh, bones like this one right here. Uh, these are the phalanges and are small and they bear little or no weight at all. And and then we talk about flat bones. This is an example of a flat bone right here, the sternum, but also the scapular. They protect vital organs and often contain blood forming cells and um, bones that have unique shapes in the body are going to be classified as irregular bones. So those are going to be the ones that have their own unique shape. This is anatomy and physiology review. You should already know this stuff. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the bone itself. Bones are also classified by structure. Uh, the structure or composition, the outer layer of the bone or the cortex is composed of a dense, compact bone tissue. The inner layer in the medulla, it contains spongy uh, bone tissue in the softer, uh, contains large spaces uh, which are filled with red and yellow marrow in it. Hematopoiesis occurs in the red marrow and the yellow marrow contains a fat cells, which can be dislodged and into the bloodstream and, of course, can cause life-threatening conditions such as a um, fat embolism. Okay, bones also contain a uh, matrix that's called osteoid. It's consistently chiefly collagen material and lipids in other substances. The skeletal muscle provides a framework for the body and allows the body to bear weight in upright support uh, for surrounding tissues. It assists in movement and protects vital organs, manufactures blood cells, and pro uh, provides the storage for minerals and salt. Now, when we're discussing a joint, is a space in which two or more bones come together and uh, they articulate at this point. The major function of a joint is to provide movement and flexibility in the human body. There are three types of joints that are discussed in your book, but the uh, different types of joints are outlined in the screen here. The first type described in your book is a synarthrodial, uh, which are completely immovable joint. Um, such as examples are uh, like the cranium, immovable joints. Uh, the second type that's de described in your book is the antiarthrodial uh, or movable joints, uh, such as the pelvic area, and um, those are also listed uh, in your uh, 
uh, example here. The third is the diathrodial or synovial, which are freely movable joints. Uh, the synovial joints are freely movable, and uh, those are also listed on this uh, list here. So these are different ways you can classify joints. A very quick review on muscles here. We have three uh, different types of muscles in the body. That includes the smooth muscle, the cardiac muscle, and the skeletal muscle. And that's discussed in your textbook. The smooth muscle is a non-striated involuntary muscle that is responsible for contractions of organs in blood vessels and is controlled by the autonomic nervous system. And you're very familiar with that. There's an example of a smooth muscle. Uh, the cardiac muscle is striated and involuntary and it's also controlled by the autonomic nervous system. The voluntary muscle is controlled by the central and peripheral nervous system. Skeletal muscles enable the body and its parts to move. When bones and joints are supporting structures or adversely affected by injury or disease, the adjacent muscle and surrounding tissue is often involved, and that's what limits the mobility in a patient. Uh, supporting structures for muscular system includes the tendons, the ligaments, and uh, different parts of the bones and joints. Let's talk about some uh, musculoskeletal changes that are going to be associated with aging that the RN needs to be aware of. Osteopenia or decreased bone density is the most common as people get older, especially in thin white women. Severe osteopenia is called osteoporosis. Uh, synovial joint cartilage may become less elastic as people get older and uh, it may be compressible and uh, leading to osteoarthritis and other issues. The most common joints affected with these are the weight-bearing joints, the hip, the knee, the cervical, and the lumbar spine is what you need to be watching for. Joints in the shoulder, arm, and feet are, can be affected as well. As a person ages, the muscle tissue itself atrophies, and a patient may have problems related to muscle atrophy. When you're assessing a patient related to musculoskeletal issues, remember to go ahead and ask them about their previous and current illness or disease that may be affecting their musculoskeletal status. Remember to find out about how this has affected their ability to do ADLs independently and what assistive devices they've had to, to use to make up for the differences. You want to ask them about their lifestyle and how their illness is affecting that. You want to ask them about any weight-bearing activities that they're able to do and you want to see what they're doing to decrease the risk factor for osteoporosis and maintain muscle strength. You want to teach and encourage them to do so. You want to ask them about allergies, particularly allergy to dairy products products and previous or current use of medications. You want to assess patient support system and coping mechanisms from musculoskeletal trauma or disease and see if that's affecting them. Ask them about their job, what they do, whether they have uh, any manual labor or anything that can put them at risk for any injuries. Uh, you want to ask them about their nutrition and what they're eating at home and see how that's helping. You want to get a family history. You want to get data that's related to their presenting problem. Ask them when their problem started, what causes it, what makes it worse, whether it's continuous or intermittent, what manifestations they're showing up with. You want to assess the pain. If they're having pain with their issues, you want to assess the intensity, the quality, and the duration, and the location. Uh, there's uh, other things that you need to assess uh, listed on there uh, in your notes that you also want to make sure that you're assessing as you do a focused assessment related to the musculoskeletal system. As far as diagnostics go, I have included in your notes several diagnostics that you might want to be uh, familiar with from standard x-rays to myelography and a CT uh, arthroscopy and uh, with uh, descriptions about what you need to pay attention to each one of them. Uh, remember to teach the patient that mild discomfort can be uh, expected with some testing such as an electromyography. Uh, you want to ask patients uh, any questions before they get an MRI and uh, you also want to make sure you assess for allergies before they get a CT scan. Thank you for listening to this lesson. I hope you have enjoyed the, this quick review of the RN assessment of the musculoskeletal system. For questions about this lesson or the corresponding notes, please feel free to email me. 
Have a lovely day.